Hello fellow weary travelers and welcome once again to Catledonia. I am Catherine Cat, or any variation thereof, and today we're doing something a little bit different. And that something a little bit different is... The Roker Starry Night Music Box Kit. I don't know about the rest of you all, but I adore music boxes. And I love building things. Especially things that can move. So I am super excited to work on this. I had originally intended to do it after the next sewing video, but there was a slight complication. And that complication was the great hard drive crash of 2023. That's right, my practically brand new SSD drive very suddenly died on me, taking with it a bunch of footage for two art videos, as well as the nearly completed draft of my next sewing video. Actually, as of releasing this video, a literal miracle has occurred in the form of my friend Sean managing to get my dead drive running just long enough to get everything I'd lost off of it. So I'm finally back on track to actually releasing some content on this channel again. But at the time... Yeah, I was, um, a little upset. <laughs> Just a bit. Anyway, after this literal bombshell of a life event, I needed to take a wee step back from the impending sewing re-edit, and this seemed like the perfect little project for the job. So let's get started, shall we? And here she is, the rocker Starry Night music box, which ironically does not play Starry Night, but I'll leave the song that it does play as a surprise. In opening the box, we are greeted by a seemingly pretty complete set of materials, including a set of wooden laser cut slabs, an instruction sheet, the music box, a wax stick, a bunch of little black rubber mabobs, and a baggie of assorted beads, tools, pins, etc. In fact, according to the directions, the only other thing that somebody needs in order to build this kit is... No, I'm, I'm not really going to use this one. Um, I'm going to use the one that my dad made years ago because, you know, it's an actual hammer. But I will keep this one on standby just in case, you know, in case this one proves a little too much for the, I don't know, what is this? Plywood? MDF? Basswood? Your guess is as good as mine. Let's take a look. Okay, so we finally got everything unpackaged and laid out, so now comes the fun part. We get to start looking through the directions, seeing what we gotta do. Time to start building. Yay! Now, apparently we don't start with this stuff. Instead, we start with the music box and with the stuff that comes in here. So we'll see what happens. Okay, I lied. We actually need this piece to start out with too. Next, we're gonna need both pieces of A5 and A3. So let's just pop them out. Oops. No, no. Don't you come out yet. No, it is not your time. I know Rafiki said it is time, but it is not time. So far unscathed. Now, I don't know if you can see it very well on these, but some of these have like little chippy bits still hanging onto them. Not helpful for the mechanism, I'm guessing. So they've included this tiny little piece of sandpaper to kind of smooth over those little bits that don't quite release as well as they ought to. And then pretty much good as new. And you're ready to go. And now, facing this way, I want this A5 in here. Perhaps it needs some gentle persuasion. Oh, oh my goodness, you're supposed to push this the whole way through. Oh my gosh. Okay. Um. All right. That steps down. Uh, quite a few more to go, but an auspicious start. According to their calculations, not mine, definitely not. I am no engineer. And uh, we next need to get this A6 piece. So. No, you little starry dudes, just, I know you're the stars of the show, or at least you think you are. 
but y'all need to chill. Now, in this case, I'm gonna turn this right side up because this is gonna be on the inside from what I can see. And this just kind of goes right on in here. Kind of, oh, oh, oh. Hey, that's pretty cool. Uh, A7, A7, where is A7? My kingdom for A7. Okay, hold on. Y'all give me a second while I go find A7. <sighs> Never mind, y'all. I am an idiot. There are two A7s and they are right here. So let's just... And let's get those sanded up and then evidently they go into these little spots and kind of hook everything together a little more securely. All right, and now according to the directions, it is now A2's time to shine. So A2, thank you for your patience. Okay, I finally figured it out. So for some reason I thought this needed to be like parallel with that, no. It, this oval does not need to be parallel with this. It needs to be lining up with this because we're going to put in our little handy dandy windy majigger bob. But before we do that, we have to set this on here. Oh my, could you maybe just cooperate? Oh, oh wise guy, eh? All right, two can play this game. Yeah, okay, or maybe not. Maybe I'm not smart enough for this. Okay. What age is this for? I, th I think it was right. 14 years old and up. Okay, I should be able to do this. Come on, come on, you can do this, cat. You definitely at least have the brain of a 14 year old. Hopefully you've advanced a little since then, but you know, no judgment. Oh no, no. Don't you start popping out of there. <laughs> now it's singing at me to mock me. Okay. One second, we're gonna time lapse this. This is gonna be a mess. Okay, so I did finally get this all together. Um, it did take a little bit of persuading from our friend here. Uh, I did briefly try this one, but no, you you need a real hammer. Cause uh, these, these two little guys in particular, these sort of hooky pieces here, just did not want anything to do with going into the holes, but eventually I got it. So on to the next step. So now all we gotta do for this step is to take this little dude, line him up in here. Oh, I think we got it. On to the next step. It's alive. Pray for me. All of this I've just learned is only step one out of 10 steps. It's just, it's just 10 steps, you guys. That's all, just steps are multi-step. Yeah, so step one of 10, done. <laughs> On to step number two. Now this is where things start to get interesting because we now need one of the little stars. Yes, it is now your time, but no, not yours. Okay, well, you can just sit over there for bad behavior. Um, one of the A1s, not, not, not both of you guys. I don't need that much steak sauce. And then we also need one of these guys, the B2 ones. And there we go. Oh my gosh, guys, look at this. Oh, it accordions, it bends. Do you see that? Sorry, getting distracted. Uh, this little guy goes And then this little guy. Hey, cute. They make a big point in the directions of making sure that these arrows are lined up. So we will do that. And then it plugs in to all this. Okay, all right, we're good. And now we just need to make one more of these. So, and then there were two. But seriously, look at these. Aren't these adorable? And the little bendies. I, I, I'm i sorry, you guys. You, you guys are just going to have to hear me talk about these little bendy bits forever. I love that you can get wood to do this. It's the coolest thing ever. Anyway, moving on. We are now instructed to do a similar, in fact, pretty much 
identical process with these B1 pieces, which honestly feel a little more fragile, what with the accordioning being in the center, but I have managed to get them out without breaking them, it would seem. What a miracle. And then we need two of the A8s for each of them. And two, okay, all of the A1s, lots of steak sauce. And then the remaining little starry dudes. Now, it's pretty much the same process to do this as it was this, so let's roll the time lapse. Now with these four little dudes assembled, it seems it is now time to start attaching them to our base. So let's see how this goes. Oh my gosh, it's so cute. Oh. Now, it was a little nerve wracking trying to get these little um, curvy bits to line up with their little slots they go into, but once you kind of get them in there, and as so long as you don't, you know, pull and twist them around too much, just kind of gently nudge them in there, you should be fine. I mean, it just looks absolutely fantastic, if I do say so myself. I am already in love with this. Let's get on to the next step, or pardon me, the next part of step number two. We're not even done with step two yet. So the last part of step two is to put on this top plate, B3. Ooh, that came out very nicely. And that should finish off step two. At which point, if you guys thought this was complicated, it only gets more complicated from here. So <laughs> strap in guys. It looks like there's a little arrow on here and looking inside, I see arrows here. So I'm guessing that all lines up. I don't really want this showing on the top. So I'm going to flip it since it appears to be symmetrical and we're just gonna. So a little bit of drama there, as you probably saw, I took a craft knife to this tiny little bit in here because uh, they didn't cut it quite wide enough to accommodate this little uh, screw end on the music box. And I wanted it to be able to turn freely because otherwise I didn't think it was going to play. So I widened it out enough so it just has just this teeny tiny little gap between them. So hopefully that should fix the issue. And it made it so that the top would actually fit. So. On to step three. They're asking for C2, C12, and C4. C4. Okay then. They have a thing saying pay attention to this arrow, so I am paying attention to this arrow. Looks like C12. We've got the logo here, and we want it logo side up with the 12 going in here and these little McDubers kind of slotting in here and then this kind of does the same thing. Oh and then it looks like it does the same thing with C13 and C3 so okay I'm starting to see a pattern here. We're essentially gonna take these little suckers after we clean them up. We want the rocker side up. Tabs will go in. These will get wedged into these corners and uh, yeah we'll see what happens. Remember the line. Always remember. <laughs> All right, there's that. Let's see what's next. It seems now that with their powers combined, these two will become the full base. So, uh, Let's see about that. It looks relatively straightforward. Uh, 
Hmm. Come on, man. Work with me here. Work with me. Please? Oh, uh, I didn't like that sound, but evidently things went into place. Okay. I, oh, I think we're good. Yeah. Check it out. Ah, we have a base. Okay. Next step. Okay, so now we need this very intimidating looking D4 piece. Just pull that little sucker right out. Okay. Uh-huh. And this piece that they're calling P16. Evidently a just... Oh, just stick it on there. There's some sort of cryptic note about... Uh, here, I'll just show you. Where is it? There it is. P16 must be assembled, otherwise the metal gasket P5 of the movement cannot be disassembled and repaired. I'm not sure what that means, except I guess they're saying don't skip the steps, which... I mean, why would you? But, whatever. This guy also has a little thingy telling us which way. And I guess we just kinda continue ramming things into place. It's worked so far. Oh, there's always one. Usually more than one, but there's always one. Maybe if I just kind of lean on it a little bit. Oh, th there it goes there. Okay. Ah, uh -huh. okay. Not so bad. Not so bad. Okay, so now it appears that we need E13, E14, and three of the four D6s. So let's grab those, shall we? We'll just kind of... Ah. ah, there they are. And hey, already sanded. Very nice. I do like how clearly everything is labeled. I kind of wish that it wasn't as noticeable when you finish the prod project, but honestly, it's not that noticeable. So what am I whining about? And with that, we've finished step three. So on to step four, it can only get crazier from here. Now this is interesting because there's a couple parts. Uh, first, we'll start with this one, this C8 gear. Uh, we're getting to the point where we're having to wax a few of the moving pieces. So there's this one here, and then also this B9 piece. However, the instructions point out that you're only supposed to uh, wax the gray part, which confused me for a moment until I realized in the illustration, this part is gray on this one. And I think it must be the uh, front here because it's got the designs and everything. So this part must be the bit that gets waxed. I guess we'll see what happens. Kindly provided eh, a tiny little itty bitty robo time. Look, do, can you see that? It says robo time. There you go. Robo time wax strip. So let's get to it. Well, they're all done, but uh, it uh, left a bit of a mess. Mm. Moving on. So now we need these B10s, three of them. A B7. It's this guy right here, oh heavens. And a B5 and a B, oh, B5 and B4 are right here. Oh, oh, they're fragile. Okay, these little guys go in here? No, not like that. Um, like this? Oh, like this. Okay. These ones may need uh, some help from the persuader. My apologies if the camera shakes. You are attached to the table. There, see? No big deal. Like it never happened. Same direction. On okay, so need to make sure this hole and that hole line up, so we put it like this. And start smacking things together again if they don't cooperate. But I think we might be... Okay, yeah. There they go. There they go. Yes. Perfect. And then this guy with... Okay, this one goes in this way. This one goes in that way. Pretty cool. Now we have E1, C5, and the first of these tiny little thingies that they're calling 
P6. Oh, heavens, I only need one. Back to your cage over here. Okay. Oh, heavens, they just want to go everywhere. Oh, this is a tool. Okay. So you put this little sucker right here, and since he won't go in of his own accord, they give you a little tool to go smishy smash. Or at least to attempt to go smishy. Okay, yes. Smishy smash. Smishy smash achieved. Although I think it could stand to go a little further in. Let me just stab it violently with the corner. Then we'll go further. Oh, that's kind of working. There it goes. Now it's down in there. Achieved. Okay, so now I've got another risky operation. I think what they're wanting me to do is take this tiny little guy here and this and like part of one of these double-sided bits of tape or whatever. Wrap a bit of the tape around here, stick it in here, cut off the excess. I, they didn't say to include cutting tools, but luckily I have some. And then they want you to hammer it down in there, <laughs> making sure, they, they make sure to tell you, to be hitting the metal piece, not the bead. <laughs> Let's see how this goes. <laughs> well, um, we got it on, but um, this is not in any way attached because uh, I don't know if you could see in the time lapse, but I got this stuff on, the double-sided tape, and it literally just slid off. So that excess that I was trimming off, it was just literally all the tape. I may go in with some E600 later and secure these with just like a tiny little dollop here at the very top to just kind of hold it in place. But for now, it'll do. Onward. Okay, now this next bit is confusing. They seem to want us to bring this fellow back. They want us to take B6A. I've laid them all out in order, although I'm pretty sure they're all the exact same piece. Just kind of shimmy this little dude on up here. And I think they want it pretty much all the way up, yeah. And then they want this one. Uh, they don't say that there's any specific alignment, so I'm just gonna stuff it on in there. And then B. There we go. Then this one is supposed to be sitting, it says something about sitting at the line. I think they mean just here at the very, very bottom. So just like barely holding on here, you know? I hope that's what they mean. We'll find out. <sighs> now we have to release the wax from its prison once again so that it can once more wax another piece, except this one, they want us to wax every inch of it, so. Let's just uh, time lapse that, shall we? Yeah. And here we have one very greasy wheel and the carnage he left behind. Hmm. We'll just, uh, yeah, just scrape that over there. Like it never happened. So it seems they want this and this opposite. So I guess this just kind of goes any old place in here. They do not seem to have any specific alignment that they want. We're gonna go like this, cause that's what the picture shows. Oh, ooh. Oh guys, look, we've got moving stuff. Probably needs more wax, but you know what? I'm happy for now. Okay, now this is interesting. We're now getting to the sun and they make a point of telling you to make sure that uh, if you see this little extra hole here, they want you to make sure that's on the opposite side of this pin head on here. So I guess we just stick it on in there. They said, use the reaction force of the desktop to assemble the bead and they show an emotion of like slamming it against it. I'm just gonna press it. And that seems to be doing the job quite nicely. We then have C6 and C7. And then we just want to kind of shove this little guy on down through there. We've got a C9 and another P6. You know the drill. We got a... Oh! Oh, you just do... Okay, hold on. Let's see if Friend Hammer can help us. Oh, golly. Okay, okay, we did it. We got it, sort of. I don't think some of the wood on this much cared for that, but you know, desperate times. Okay, yeah, there we go. It's in. 
Or at least it's as in as it's gonna get, I think. Now we assemble all this. And you got a nice little, uh, nice little solar system going. And now it looks like we have a couple more of these little doohickey type things to do, so we're just gonna time lapse that. And just like that, the central solar system is assembled. The spinners are spinning, and it is ready to add to our base. If I look uncertain, it's because it seems, well, kind of wobbly. Too wobbly. Remember that problem I mentioned before? <laughs> eh, just wait. Not to be deterred, I left the questionably fitted central solar system as it was in favor of further assembly, which in this case meant more waxing. Enjoy. All right, so now we just gotta put the doohickeys and the thingamabobbies and then one of my favorites. Mm. Let's get on with it. For now, assembly continued without any particularly horrific issues and I found myself very amused with the new spinny planetmajigger. I am easily amused, until a worry hit me. No, not the one you're thinking of. This was a brand new issue. Yeah, see, this is correct. This? No. So now we gotta take this apart and redo it. <laughs> Roll the clip. Ah, the pains of misreading directions, but honestly, it is to be expected when just starting out with a new project, particularly complex ones like this. Fortunately, the fix wasn't too difficult to do, just, uh, irksome. But now it's on to the other planetary gear thingy. I gotta say, I love that part of the project is to build your own little tools. There's just something very satisfying about using a tool you assembled yourself. And with both planetary gears applied to the central ring, we gotta use our little measuring tool to make sure that the gear spacing is at least mostly correct. The brown one was spot on first try, but the purple one... <sighs> Let's just say the purple one gave me much grief. But eventually it cooperated, and it was time to assemble a mercifully easier planet. See what we end up with this time. Okay, now with that out of the way, and this guy, very, very shaky indeed. What is it with these little ones and not wanting to stick? This pink one and this purple one, they giving me trouble. I don't know why, but anyway, moving on. Uh, we next need E6, E5. All right. Let's see what we do with these guys. We're nearing the end here. Now, somehow, this teeny little thing goes somewhere on here. I think it wants it here. Let's see if I can do this without causing an upset in the pink planet's domain. We're gonna say it's the Jigglypuff planet. They're very sensitive over there. And we don't want to disturb their ambiance. Yeah, there's another cool spiky Neato piece going there. Okay, and then we got this funky little guy who I assume has the same core function, but instead he goes down here. Oh dear, even closer to planet Jigglypuff. And hey, we got it. It appears now that by some means, which I can only assume involve the dark arts, that we are meant to get this, aka this little guy, to rest on here. AKA these little guys. That seems risky to say the least, but we're, we're gonna try it. Oh, this is terrifying. Okay. How 
how the heck are any of these supposed to? I'm so confused. Okay, we've got one in. <laughs> we've got one. We've got one, you guys. Okay, now if we can just coerce the other three. Two down, two to go. Push in the troublesome... Ah, there we go. Yeah, with all of these, uh, something I've noticed is that one side is more prone to kind of go in easily than the other, so if you stick in the... Uh, the side that's difficult to get in from the get-go, then it makes uh, putting the whole peg in that much easier. I'm not sure how else to explain that, but hopefully it was helpful. Now return planets Haunter and Jigglypuff to their rightful places among the stars, and we shall see what we need to do next. need this giant D3, very fragile looking piece. And then we need these two D5s. Boom, boom. Now, as I understand it, we arrange these kind of facing each other and these just pop right on in. We got them in. All right, next. Oh my goodness. Okay, so we're taking off Hunter and Jigglypuff for a moment here because they expect us to get these little holes here into these holes. That sounds like it's a tall order, but you know, we're, we're just gonna go for it and pray that I don't snap something in half or pull apart something I already assembled. One thing that I will say, if you wanna do these sorts of kits, either get really good with precision work with a hammer or really work on buffing up your fingers. <laughs> Is that a thing? Can you make your fingers buff? But that said, it is on! I wonder if I put it on the right way. I didn't even think about direction. Uh, oh, they wanted it the other way. One moment. And time around, that was much easier, probably because I had already beaten the wood into submission at this point. However, maybe someday I will learn to read directions properly, but it is probably not this day. Anyway. Let's check and see what we have next. Oh boy. Oh, we're, we're bringing this back. We're bringing this back, y'all. Okay. Oh my gosh, there are so many pieces converging right now. You have no idea. Hang, hang on, let me get you a better angle where you can see more. You guys. Oh, there was a big screw up. Way back in like, in part four, I missed this piece. It's supposed to be all under all this. So regrettably, we're gonna have to detach this again. Oh, pray for me. All right, so we managed to remove all of this. This piece came off with it, but honestly, since it's attached to the part that's very close to breaking, I don't mind this. It was a lot easier to get in there than, you know, the alternative. So that's fine. We're gonna leave that there. This is what we need to fix. Now, somehow I missed this before. This needs to be screwed on here. <laughs> kind of an important piece. Um, so yeah, I'm uh, gonna... I'm gonna try to do that now. <laughs> it doesn't just go on the bottom, it goes in here. Oh. Okay, it seems to be attached. These are still kind of questionable because those screws are quite big, but 
We're, we're making do. All right, time to put this guy back on. Hopefully this will all fit together. Okay, well, it was a heck of a time getting it on there, but I think we've got all the pieces connected. So now, hopefully, we should be able to move on to the actual final step. Okay, we're on the home stretch now. We just need E3 and C1. Let's get to it. how it's all put together and nothing's broken. So now I just gotta glue down uh, Jigglypuff and Haunter over here and then we'll move on to seeing if it actually works. Well, if nothing else, it sure looks pretty. I mean, not gonna lie, this thing came out a lot better than I expected, but let's see how it sounds. Oh, come on. Uh, assembly seems to be lacking. It is not quite moving the way it should. Oh, there's a big part of it. This right here is ramming up against other pieces. I'll bet I reassembled this middle section incorrectly. Hold on. Let's see what happens if we do this, pull this away a little. Okay, maybe that was it. So cute, you guys. Hold on, I'm gonna bring you in for a close up. It is complete. I love this thing so much, you guys have no idea. It's just so cute and small and vaguely steampunk and it plays music, theater music, and ah, oh, I just love it. Small editor's note though, there is one last problem to fix, which I will be fixing off camera. Remember when I had to take everything apart to add on that little metal plate? <laughs> uh, well, I screwed it on from the wrong side. So I'm going to have to reopen it and take the screws from going downward to coming from the bottom up. And that should stop the wobbling problem. Hopefully. At which point it should be running like a champ and I will hopefully feel slightly stupid. Slightly. But now the question remains. Should I do more of these? The company has a lot of these little kits and they're all really interesting. They've got stuff like a lantern, they've got some clocks, they've got perpetual motion machines, just straight up wooden models. They, they got a lot going on over there, okay? Or maybe I should do some other crafting kits. I do have a book nook kit for a little elvish library that has been patiently waiting in the wings for its time to shine. But yeah, comment down below and let me know what you think I should do next while continuing to dig my sewing videos out of the ashes. And while you're at it, if you've enjoyed this little dive into crafting insanity, feel free to hit that like button. And if you'd like to see more videos like this or whatever other mischief I happen to get up to on this channel, then go ahead and hit that subscribe button and hit the bell if you want YouTube to actually remember to tell you whenever I post things. But until next time, fellow weary travelers, thanks so much for watching. 
good day, and God be with you. Don't mind me, I'm just gonna go goblin stare at this for the next 10 hours.